today on this old house. Now we're ready to stand a dormer wall. We are continuing our Generation Next initiative this season, where we encourage young people to come into the trades. This is what I know I want to do with my life. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hey there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to this old house here in Westerly, Rhode Island, where we're working on this ranch house from the 1940s. Now, as you can see, a lot of work has already begun. There was a large 20-foot tall brick chimney right here that we demolished. Jeff Swain and Mark McCullough did that for us. All of the perimeter walls on this side of the house, those came down, and you can see they've been completely reframed now. And Jeff and his crew have put in the floor joists for the second floor. And outside, well, we had to do some work on the original foundation. We need a new window right here. So we cut through the concrete. Big 30-inch wet saw went through there, and they were able to push the piece out in one bite. Oh, look at that. This house never had a second story. So to make one, it started with taking the old roof off, which was sort of right about there. And now with this gable end up, you can see the new roof line is a gambrel, which means that it has a shallow pitch up top, and then it breaks to a steeper pitch right here. And Tommy, that's one of the things that makes the house a Dutch colonial, right? That's right. And what we're doing here is we actually have a rafter system right here on the saw horses that mirror images that gable end. Okay. And that roof system's only going to be about 30 inches wide. All right. And so the construction of this, Jeff, what goes into it? So we, since we know what our, our width is on that, we're going to actually pre-attach this side of the sheathing so that when we put up in place, we just have to nail that side. Okay. And, and then we got a full dormer basically going in between that section of roof and this section of roof. So just a short little bit of the Gambrel exactly. roof profile before we get to the dormer. Exactly. And you've got double what here? This is a double inch and a half, nine and a half inch wide yep. material. This is going to form our Gambrel rafter. So build first and then we lift. Exactly. Like it all yep. the way? Yeah, good. Okay. All right, you ready? Everybody on the sticks? On three. One, two, three. Up. All right, Ryan, you're on the nail gun. Okay, it's a beautiful thing. Coming up. Ready? One, two, three. Up. Okay, hold it there. All right. So that's up. Now we're ready to stand a dormer wall. So you bring them right here on the floor. Yep. What do you got going here? So this is the back of the house, faces the water. So the uh, this is a bedroom window here, bathroom in the center, another bedroom. The homeowner was up here, he said, wow, we got a nice view, let's make a wider. So we actually changed on the fly for a triple window there. First and, change um, order. Little First change, change order, order, right? But that's a good, time, good thing he was here. It was because perfect. Because he can appreciate the view, and why not take advantage perfect of it? Timing. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect timing, yeah. So we're going to lay this out. We'll, we'll frame it in place. We'll sheathe it. We'll stand it up. All right. All right. Let's get, All right, let's get, get to it. it.
if you walk in sawdust, you're gonna slide, so just be careful. Okay, you guys ready? We're going up to waist, ready, up. Okay, go for it, go. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. The goal of our Generation Next initiative is to revive interest in the building trades. We bring apprentices to the job site where, over the course of several months, they can learn the skills of the trade from our crew. This season, we have three new apprentices joining us from across the country each with their own unique story. As a kid, I genuinely loved all things home and construction. Like I spent my summers, and I don't know if it's embarrassing or not, but I spent my summers watching Martha Stewart, Katie Brown, this old house, you know? Like I didn't want to do other things. My path was a little different than most carpenters, I feel like. Um, I went to school uh, for four years for biomedical engineering. Um, I got a degree in biomedical engineering, obviously, and um, I worked at an office for a few months, and I absolutely hated it. I really didn't like going into to work every day and, and sitting in a cubicle and not getting up until the end of the day, time to go home. So I decided to make some changes in my life, and I, I looked for other options, and carpentry was a good option, and I've been loving it ever since. I was more of a homebody kid, you know, so I didn't really do much outside until I joined a program called Uncommon Construction, and it was for uh, high school students from all over New Orleans to get outside and learn how the construction world work, and you guys build a home from the ground up, and you learn every detail about it from the ground to the roof. And for me, anytime walking down the street, I can be proud to say I built that house. If I tear down the wall, my name is written on the base of the wall. <laughs> Tell me about why you applied to the This Old House Apprenticeship. I've been trying to do it on my own, you know, learning on my own YouTube videos, This Old House, you know, talking with the guys in the building department. So it was like, I just want the opportunity. You know, I, I, I am eager to learn. I will put this into practice. You know, this is what I've done, and I just need a little bit more help. I saw that this is an opportunity for myself to learn from more pros and learn how to really make a home into something that it could be, it could be comforting, but it could also be something to be very proud of. I found that the best way for me to learn is uh, when someone actually lets me make my own mistakes. So if someone tells me to go do something and I'm not so sure that I can do it, I'm at least going to go try to do it and they're going to show me from my mistakes where I went wrong. I know I'm on the bottom of the totem pole right now, so if someone who's above me tells me to do something, I, that's it. I just go, I have to go do it, and I have to put my time in. And I know that you know this company rewards hard work, and you know if you work them for for them for a while, you'll be put in a position where you'll be making those decisions. I just have to put my time in. Take this material right here. It's like an uncured rubber. I want to work with Tom. Yeah. I want to work with Charlie. Yeah. I mean, I'm here working with you. This is true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's cool, bro. That's right. It's it's a big deal. That slug of water goes down like it's going down the straw, but it needs a way. I want to leave gaining as much as these, you know, these guys would give me. I'm hoping to learn how to take down the wall the proper way instead of just bashing it. I want to learn how to put up the right proper siding. I want to learn how to put the plumbing in correctly without making a toilet flood. I want to learn 
everything from the beginning to the end. When I get out of work with carpentry, I am very tired, but I feel very fulfilled. I feel like I just left the gym. You kind of get a little endorphin rush and you feel accomplished. And the good thing about this is you can look at the house and be like, oh, I did that today. I put that, you know, I put the rim board up today or, you know, I put the paper on today. You can actually see your progress. It's a, it's a visual progress. You get like a sense of accomplishment. I want to learn plumbing. I want to learn electrical. I want to learn it all because this is what I know I want to do with my life. You ready to get to work? Most definitely. When we get started. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step by step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. When this house was built in the 1940s, they installed a typical sewer system for the time, a cesspool. With our new construction, we can think about a modern septic system for the next 70 years. Jeff, you have been tasked with designing us a proper septic system. We have no town sewer. Can we use a conventional system here? No, we cannot, and I'll explain why. We have a, a conventional system here. We have the house here. The flow from the house is going into a conventional septic tank. The solids are settling in the tank. This is the tank I've always understood. Yep. Solids and liquids come here, settle right to here. Bacteria breaks it down. The liquid, the effluent, leaves this way and goes out to the leaching field. Correct. So is that what we, we're going to use here? We can't use it on this site because of the Adams property is in a critical resource area. Okay, what does that so mean? That means it's in an environmentally sensitive area. And because of the coastal ponds, the salt ponds along the south shore, we have to use a denitrification system. Because that's the big issue, nitrogen? That's nitrogen. Okay. So we have to reduce the nitrogen going into the groundwater. So how do we get around that? Well, first off, we have a, the house here. We have a similar type septic system. Then it goes into this second baffle of the tank. It goes into a pump. It pumps up onto this um, Advantex pretreatment unit, which has hanging sheets in it full of bacteria. The bacteria uh, change the type of nitrogen that's in the system. It flows down into this tank and where the actual denitrification takes place. So the denitrification takes place down in the septic tank. Mm -hmm. So it flows through here three to four times. At each cycle, only a portion of the flow goes out to the leach field. So how much lower will our emissions of nitrogen be for this system versus a conventional? It's about 80%. Wow. Yeah, so it's an 80% reduction right. in nitrogen. Right. So what do these membranes look like? I have one over here. All right. This is a hanging sheet. It's a textile fabric. There's okay. two courses of it. And there's more than one in the... In there's the... a number of these in there, okay. in the pod. And the effluent is distributed across the top of these evenly. Right. It just sort of wets the surface and drips yeah. down. And this is just loaded with it's, bacteria? It's covered here. with bacteria. The okay. bacteria love this. And the bacteria breaks down or converts the nitrogen? It converts the nitrogen to a different type of nitrogen. Okay. And then a portion of this, most of this will go back to the septic tank. Yeah and a portion of it will go out to the leach field. And keep on knocking down that nitrogen level. Yes. So does this type of system mean we can change the size of the leaching field? Yes, we can. A uh, conventional field has a four inch pipe. Oh yeah. And it would have two holes in it. Right. Some water dribbles out here, covered yeah. in stone. Covered in stone. Yeah. But in this situation, we can use a smaller pipe wow. with uh, very tiny orifices. Look at the size, that's, that's it? Yeah, these are the orifices, wow. eighth inch holes. And they're about two feet apart or 15 inches, depending on the size of the system. All right. And that's it. All right, so where does all this equipment go on site? Uh, let's go take a look at the site. All right, you're on. So could these homeowners have even considered reusing that cesspool? No, they cannot. They do a substantial improvement to the house. They have to replace the cesspool. All right, so our drain line leads at the basement level right out to here, right? Correct. Well, sort of, but it comes over from this corner a little bit more. OK. And then it comes down. It's at the basement level. comes down here to the septic tank. Septic tank's right about here? The septic tank's a little bit lower. It's down in here. It's eight, five feet by 10 feet. It's got two 24 inch covers and it's got a large flat cover as well. It's about three quarters of the size of a sheet of plywood. Will it stick up or? It'll, it'll be flush to grade. Okay, great. And where's the leaching field? Uh, let's go down, I'll show you. Okay. Okay, the effluent will come down from the septic tank and it'll come down into a small pump chamber here. Right about here, okay. And then from here, it's gonna get pumped up to the disposal field or the bottomless sand filter. Okay. The bottomless sand filter is uh, about 10 and a half feet by 20 feet. Now that's amazing. I mean, a typical leaching field is 30 by 60, 70, 80. This right. is really small. Yeah. 
No, these are one of the advantages of these types of systems is they're very small and compact. Yeah. That's why we use them. Great. Um, the system's partially above ground, as I said, and there's going to be timbers around the edge and there'll be stone on top. That's all you'll see. You can landscape around it a little bit? You can landscape around it to hide some of the timbers if you'd yeah. like. So what's the next step? Um, construction. I'll see you when there's a hole in the ground. Okay. All right, so the rafter runs up on an edge. Once these side walls were raised, it was time to start working on the ceiling here. So we have got 28 individual ceiling joists, 32 feet long for each of them. Then the attic deck went down, so now it's time to start thinking about the roof. Hey, Tommy, look at the crew you're working with. Yeah. We're actually teaching these guys the anatomy of a roof rafter. Nice. First thing we're going to do is get a ridge up, though. You want to give me a hand? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. All right. So now we get the pitch of the roof off of the plan. In this case, the plan calls for a 6 and 12, which means... All right. So, Kevin, we are up in the unfinished attic. We'll, we'll be able to put mechanicals up here. Yeah. And this is our ridge. Woo. So we've got a continuous 34-foot long 14-inch uh, LVL. Nice. So because we're using engineered lumber, everything is perfectly true. So we're able to put a positive cleat down, same pitch as our roof, and that'll be a positive stop for our rafters. Just to speed up the insulation, it'll just sit right on it and we'll exactly. be off. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, you can see the pocket's already been made. Yeah, and then we've got a little collar tie there. That, that pocket's going to sit right in there and hold that ridge in place. Got the same thing on the other side. So are we ready to lift this? We're ready to put it in place, yeah. OK. I'll get right here for you. All right, so we've got a little pocket up here for the LVL to sit in. And that's going to drop right down onto that collar tie. That's our positive stop. So are we ready to set this thing? Yep. You guys ready? Ready. OK, on three. One, two, three. Yep. Nice. That is nice. That is a beauty. Same thing over there. So we've set a dry line here, a piece of string from a fixed point on that rafter to a fixed point on this rafter. We spaced it up three quarter. So the line is independent of this ridge. And what that's going to do is it's going to gauge us so that this ridge stays dead center as we add in our rafters. Because we could push it out of center as we put those rafters exactly. on. Exactly. Nice. So the other thing is we want this ridge to be perfectly level. So we spaced it off 3 quarters of an inch. So now we use a spacer block, and that gives us our height. And we are right on the money right there. Love it. All right, so we got some rafters already cut. We're going to get one in the center here. What are you, Nick? Okay, so we're going to fasten this end. We're going to leave that end loose. We'll set the other side, and then we can position that ridge in the center. All right, get a screw in, Zach. All right, we're going to fill in the rest of these. We'll work out of the center, and we'll go one side and then the other, so that way we keep that ridge straight all the way as we go. So the first thing we have to establish is the pitch of the roof. And to find the pitch of the roof, we're going to look at our plan. If you look right here on our plan, it's marked. This is a 612 pitch. Okay. You notice 6 inches and 12 inches. That means that every time the rafter steps in one foot, it goes up six inches. So take a frame and square like this, every six inches that it goes up, you go over 12. If it's 24, it would go up 12. If it was 36, it would go up 18, and so on down the line until you meet your length. All right? So now you hold your framing square. Now I'm going to start at the ridge. And we're going to take our measurement from the ridge and we're going to go down. But the first thing I want to find is the angle or the pitch of the roof. I take my frame and square. So the 6 inches is exactly even with the edge here. And the 12 is exactly even where it meets the edge right there. So now if I mark the edge of the frame and square right there, 
That's my 6 and 12 pitch. Okay. Continue that all the way up till it's zeroed out at the top. And once I cut that, I'm then going to go down the other end and make a seat cut. All right, so now we have a nice straight cut where the rafter will meet the ridge, and now we're going to measure for our length. So we take our tape measure, and we hook it right on the top of the rafter at the top where it comes on the ridge. We slide it all the way down. We make up a template or a pattern, and we take this to mark every single rafter. You want them to be all the same. Now we know our rafter length is 217 inches from the point there to our plumb cut down here. So I bring it all the way down, 217 inches, which is right there. Now all I have to do is mark where it sits on the wall here, the face of the wall, the soffit, and our fascia. And we'll cut that. And take it and make my plumb cut here. Now I didn't go past the line on either one. I'm going to finish that up later. Make this cut here. Follow my angle again. Everything's parallel. And now I want to make our soffit cut right here. And that's just going to be nice and square. I'm going to eyeball that onto the line. Make the cut. Okay, so now we have our fascia, our soffit, and you notice that this piece for a seat cut is still in there. You don't want to overcut that with a circular saw in both directions, and it's not as important with a rafter as it is with a stringer, but it's a good practice to, to do, is now I want to finish that up with either a handsaw or a jigsaw. So that's how you cut a rafter. We need six more. Let's see how you do. That is some nice progress today. Well, and it's yeah, a much bigger day. house, huh? Yeah, yeah, it got a lot bigger. So tomorrow, we're going to ice and water this, and we'll be ready for weather. All right. And Tommy, what do you got coming up next week? Next week, I'm going to work with the apprentices. We're going to set some posts and a beam to get started on the deck. All right. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. And I'm Jeff Sweener. This old house here in Westerly, Rhode Island. Yeah, it's really coming together. It's looking good. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.